Hey, welcome back to the Wall Street Exclusive Daily Show. I'm Joe Springer, helping you make informed decisions so you can succeed in the market. What is a stock worth? How do you figure out what a stock should, should be worth? Is, does it have an intrinsic value based on anything? Yes. A stock gives you, stock ownership gives you the rights, give you, gives you a proportional right to the profits of a company. Okay, so the value of, that, of those proportional rights should be a reflection of the future profits you're likely to enjoy. And so Warren Buffett defined intrinsic value this way. Intrinsic value is an all-important concept that offers the only logical approach to evaluating the relative attractiveness of investments and businesses. Intrinsic value can be defined simply. It is the discounted value of the cash that can be taken out of a business during its remaining life. So the value of an asset's future cash flows adjusted for the riskiness and timing. It's riskiness because you might not get those future cash flows. You think you will, but you might not. And timing because a value of a dollar now, a dollar is more valuable now than one you can have 10 years from now. Okay, so you, how much money is this ever going to make for me? And then cut off some because of riskiness and timing. So the formulas for calculating the discounted cash flow are mostly baloney because you don't know what the margins are going to be, the sales are going to be, the, uh, your borrowing rate, things like that. So, if you, so small changes in each of those you, compounded out for 20 years give you vastly different numbers. So the formulas are not too complicated. They're just not very helpful. So I won't go into them here. Uh, Warren Buffett is said to not actually do the, the formulas, just kind of have an idea in his head because the formulas don't really help you. There's just too many variables. And this, there's also the concept of the enterprise value. So the discounted cash flow, if you were going to evaluate a business on discounted cash flow, maybe you said, hey, isn't there something missing there? What about the assets? You could have two companies with the same earnings power and one has lots of assets, owns lots of land, has lots of cash on the balance sheet, whereas another has none of that and in fact has debt, but a discounted cash flow would actually give you basically, you know, the two companies might look like have the same, same value. Okay, so you, want to, you do want to value the assets. Discounted cash flow is not enough. Uh, so, and and one, one important way to do that is to look at the enterprise value, which takes into account debt and cash. So let's take, for example, Hormel. Uh, we said in the last segment, Hormel is the only large, the only stock over $10 billion we put in the Daily Double portfolio. Uh, and we really liked it because the insiders, a bunch of things we like about it. Uh, but let's just imagine Hormel, right now they're about $15 billion in market cap. And let's just say that uh, they had $10 billion on the balance sheet in cash. So if you bought that company for $15 billion, uh, you're really buying a bank account of $10 million. So really you're spending $5 billion. So let's say uh, that Hormel has a market cap of $15 billion and $1 billion of earnings each year. So its price to earnings ratio is 15, 15 billion of market cap, 1 billion of earnings, okay. Uh, but if, if we use the enterprise value, that's why people use enterprise value to earnings ratios instead of price to earnings ratios, because it takes into account cash and debt. So Hormel, being a $15 billion market cap with $1 billion in earnings and $10 billion on the balance sheet will give you an enterprise value to earnings ratio of 5. Anything below 10 is considered really cheap. But now imagine Hormel uh, with a $15 billion market cap, $1 billion of earnings, and uh, $10 billion of debt. Okay, if you bought that company for $15 billion, you really sort of paid $25 billion because the second you got the company, you went into debt $10 billion. Okay, so really it costs you $25 billion to get $1 billion of earnings each year. So that has an enterprise value to earnings ratio of 25. Pretty terrible. So uh, if you remember when we talked about Michaels, if you watched that when we said Michaels has an enterprise value to, to earnings of about 12, when people do earnings, they generally do the enterprise value to the earnings before interest and taxes. Interest and taxes doesn't have much to do with this specific business. So if you cut out interest and taxes, you kind of get maybe more of a pure look at just that business. So an enterprise value to EBIT ratio of 10 or under is generally considered cheap. It might be similar to a price to earnings ratio of 15 to under, something like that. Okay, so there's the discounted cash flow. Uh, you don't need to know the formulas for the discounted cash flow, but the discounted cash flow is how you should value a company, its intrinsic value. What's it really worth? Well, stock gives me a right to future profits. How, much, how large are those future profits gonna be? How likely is it that I'm actually gonna get them? And uh, how long is it gonna take? So, you, so discounted cash flow, that's how you arrive at intrinsic value. Okay, and then the enterprise value, we said, well, discounted cash flow doesn't take into account the assets. 
And so uh, enterprise value takes into account cash and debt. Does not take, and you still want to look at, at the other assets because it does not take into account things that are not liquid or, or cash equivalents. So you still want to look at the assets as well. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'm Joe Springer, helping you make informed decisions so you can succeed in the market. Next, uh, we're going to play the uh, Know Your SEC Forms game. We're going to show you the four SEC forms that maybe are the very most important for you to keep track of.